The Shoe House was built by Adolf Loos between the years of 1912 to 1913 for Gustav Schuh, a lawyer and Viennese intellectual aligned with the Garden City Movement and his wife Helen Schuh. The Shoe House was the first building in which a flat roof was used as an outdoor terrace. It is certain that these terraces played an important role in the development of 20th century architecture in a time where the use of flat roofs was subject to a great deal of controversy. The suburb of Heidzig is a wealthy neighborhood where most of the houses are symmetrical and of a neoclassical style. The residents of the suburb were shocked by the new aesthetics that the house would bring into their area and saw the house as a disgrace and a, an insult to common sense. Luz remained firm behind his decisions, and the only concession that he made was to plant ivy on the garden facade. The house is an asymmetrical sept volume, made up of four floors, a basement, the ground floor, first floor, and second floor, where a renting apartment was built completely independent. The basement was designed so as to hold a gym for future purposes. The ground, the ground floor is the main floor and that which is open to the public. The main entrance of the house is on the left side. On this floor, bedrooms are located both family and service. The bedrooms facing the east facade have large terraces. A dealer hall gives access to different areas including the bathroom on this floor. The second floor was built as a completely separate department whose entrance is on the left side of the main facade and as accessed by a spiral staircase illuminated by natural light through three large windows that rise above the entrance. This basic idea of the structure is for one to step onto the east terrace from each bedroom as a symbol of personal freedom. The open air feeling of the occupants is meant to reflect a new bodily consciousness of the bourgeois avant-garde. I wanted to further explore the relationship between the uses of the rooms and the terrace experience itself. In the first floor, the private rooms, which are the child's bedroom and the master bedroom, are connected to the terrace shared space, allowing both occupants, although with separate rooms, have a shared space of connection to peer downwards onto the garden areas or the street view. Whilst in the second floor, the terrace space is adjoined to the garden salon, and but has a different experience to that of the first floor as the view would give access to the first floor's terrace, the street view, and also the garden. In both cases, I believe the occupants are offered the opportunity for this feeling of personal freedom through the terrace. It could be argued that it is more successful on the second floor terrace as it is completely private. The interiors of the rooms, being mostly covered in dark oak, in the social areas and wood painted white in the bedrooms allow for a strong distinction of the spaces between public and private and reflects the notion of spatial domesticity that Luce had developed.